G'day guys, welcome to this week's Life on the Hulls. Janet and I are up in Bowen in North Queensland and uh, we're in a very windy spot but yesterday we paddled out to that island. So we're all for having cheap holidays when we're up here. We've got our sea kayaks with us and we just pull up on a beach and take off. It's been awesome, hasn't it? It's been a great trip. Absolutely brilliant. Now I'm not going to bore you with our sailing trip in the wood Sundays. <laughs> we're going to make a probably a full video of that I think but we're up for part one of our hull extension videos where Janet got in and got uh, got sticky and uh, it all went awry when the gun clogged up so that's all coming up we're going to put in a number of parts this is going to go on for some time and uh, they're going to turn out really nice so let's get into it oh don't fall everyone living here in New South Wales because the sun's out I have uh, seen a four day window of sun and the great thing about that is I'm going to be able to finally start on my sugar scoops. The problem with my sugar scoops is my tent's here and my sugar scoops are about a foot out from the end of my tent. Now it's critical that I have a low moisture environment to do these because although I'm doing them in vinyl and stuff, by laying them up in an environment where they could be subject to moisture and that it could be dew, it could be rain, it could be anything, it could be just general humidity absolute nightmare i could end up with osmosis in the actual sugar scoop and i don't want that when i've made all this effort to keep the osmosis out of the rest of the hull i've done a full clean out on my gun i'm going to move it down to the boat and at least then it's ready for a run of sun it should take me three or four days to knock out these sugar scoops uh, and that includes a bit of gel coat i don't need a lot of gel coat but i'm going to do a fair amount of work over the next few days and just get them consolidated, and then I'm gonna take five days off. I need a friggin' break. I'm just about over doing all this hard work. It's been some pretty long days and some pretty epic, uh, epic effort. My air dryer, I've got this fantastic thing. If you're ever doing composites, boat building or anything, don't ever scrimp on moisture control. This is, uh, this is just the best friggin' thing you'll ever do, because it removes all the moisture out of the airstream, and you end up with a pretty dry, um, spray pattern. You don't want to be initiating moisture into your laminates. It's so, so important. And a lot of boats that suffered from osmosis from years ago, a lot of it wouldn't even be from the fact that it was sitting in the water. It would be that it was actually in the laminate to start with. All those sorts of factors like humidity, sweat from the operator, um, moisture coming through the airstream, and the longer your hose, the more moisture you're going to put in. So this thing here dumps the moisture about every five minutes. I hear psh, and what that's doing is purging any moisture out of our airstream, cooling the air, taking all of the moisture out of it, and that is just so critical. So this thing here probably has saved so much of my laminate, and I've ended up with a really good dry uh, product. I think you can pretty much imagine how excited we are to get onto these sugar scoops. The weather's been horrendous and uh, we just haven't been able to get to it, so we've been tackling a number of other jobs. What I'm doing here is actually using plasticine and forming it into long sausages and actually smearing it into the join in between the extension mould and the existing hull. Uh, as it sits there, you can see I'm creating a nice small margin which will actually not stick to the gel coat and be easily removed when the mould is taken off the boat. Today I intend to get the gel coat onto the actual raised uh, arc that we've created on the back here that the, the mould's actually forming. And then hopefully I'm gonna get at least four layers down. I'm gonna get the two tie layers down and a layer of 1215 quad and then another layer of 300 CSM just to consolidate that laminate, hopefully all today. Um, I I'm, I'm really am pushing to get it done because uh, the weather's good for four days and I reckon I can knock this whole extension out in less than three or four days and get the thing to the point where it's ready for foam. And, uh, and we've got a lot of humidity in the night at the moment. It's actually turning cold. We're heading into winter. It's the 1st of May. So uh, I'm basically going to knock this one out this week. I'm going away for five days and I'm going to come back and I'm going to smash out the other one. Janet's already polished the mould up there. We're going to fit it and we're going to get it done. So at least I've got the construction of the holes finished. Then I can work on the sugar scoops and get them tied in. So what I've got to do right now though is it's very imperative that I mask up all my white stuff because I'm going to be spraying a lot of gel coat here or yeah, gel coat and basically I don't want it on the existing boat that's here 
and certainly I don't want it on my my whole substrates because the problem is if I get it on there, then it's, I'm gonna have to remove it before I actually uh, I begin to laminate this afternoon. So I'm gonna mask down along this line here that I've already put on with the plasticine. Once the gel coat's done, I'll rip that off and then I'll be able to come in later on and laminate from here all the way back into the hull itself on the out, on the inside, and then I'll come back once the mold's removed in a few days' time, I'll be able to then come in and laminate on the outside as well. So it'll have a dual join on the inside and the outside, making that nice and structural. The second thing I need to consider too is the base of it. It's fairly long, so it's going to need some foam reinforcement, and that will uh, probably include some like bearers in the floor so that I can actually uh, put into place, and they'll be foam core, uh, pre-laminated foam core so it's already got the structure in it and then I'll tie that back in and probably three or four of those stringers along the bottom to give it its strength. Happy Sunday morning, honey. First sunny day for months and I've got you working. <laughs> Let's get some realities here. When the sun shines, we spray. We don't go out boating and kayaking and swimming and all the things that fun people do and go and sit in bars and drink. We're spraying, honey. Oh, no, I can't spray. She's pretty dirty. <laughs> might, uh, might be a pretty short marriage, this, if I keep doing this every Sunday morning, but uh, yeah, it's just gotta be done. Has to be done or the boat doesn't get done. Acetone in the gun. I always leave my gun with acetone in it. So it's always able to be clean. So I just tip that out. And give it a couple of minutes to dry. And then we're ready to go, Jen. <laughs> so we're spraying these guys. We're going to spray white gel coat over all of this. I'm not going to put a thick coat down on the bottom of it because from here down, is the water line. So I want to make sure that basically from here down, I only put a thin layer of gel coat so I don't have to sand too much off to get back to the, the base to put our epoxy barrier coat on. But I'm still going to put some on just to cover the mould and then we'll be able to lay the laminate on it. Okay, these HVLP guns, high volume, low pressure. So they're around about 60 to 65 PSI. Um, you'll notice the spray distance that you're spraying from has to be a defined distance and you'll notice the sound when it hits my hand that's the optimum position so spraying it out there the air's going out here but as I bring my hand in as I bring my hand in it'll hit a point where you'll actually hear it change right there so about 30 to 40 centimeters is the optimum position for the spray and that makes sure I get the right material balance and the right fan pattern on the product. So let's get into it, eh? Okay, so we've got about half a litre of gel coat here. Gel coat, not flow coat. About half a litre, so I'm going to catalyse it to about seven millilitres. And that should give me the chance to get it out pretty quickly. How you doing up there? Yeah. You recovered? <laughs> Am I recovered? Have you recovered? From my fast track apprenticeship. Yeah, that was like the fastest learning curve ever. It was like, Jenna do this, Jenna do that, Jenna do this. I got a little bit caught up. You're having it wrong. Yeah, the problem is, the problem is I'm jammed in there and I can't get out and I have to admit I wasn't quite prepared for what happened. I had a blockage of the gun and we needed to, we got out two full, pretty much two full cupfuls, didn't we? Yes. Onto the extensions. 
and then uh, realised that it wasn't actually coming out as fast as we like, so I brushed the rest. But the good thing was that I already had plenty of material down, and that actually looks pretty fabulous, I reckon. I reckon that's spot on. And the Savo, we're going to come back and uh, get some laminates on it. Even if it's only four layers, I'll be happy. <laughs> we had a bit of a blockage, didn't we? <laughs> In the gun. Mental blockage, I think. Yeah, a little bit of yuck. Don't know what it was, a bit of cloth or something. And uh, we had to go back to, I oh, need cloth. We had to resort back to a bit of brushwork. But we got the first couple of layers on, which was the most important thing, because that's the external spray. And then the last bit, oh, <laughs> Like the Truman Show. <laughs> Warts and all. And I'm not a nice guy like the Truman Show. Am I, honey? No. <laughs> you weren't too bad. You were stressed, but you weren't too bad. Speed, so. Okay. Hurry. I'll leave you in peace. You just needed speed. I'll leave you in peace. All right. So yeah. my rule about cleaning the gun with acetone, never pulling it apart. Well, today, guess what? Get it pulled apart. I normally don't ever have to pull this thing apart. As the apprentice today, I learnt lots of jobs. Yeah. Without any training. Yeah, without any training. <laughs> just, with a, just with the boss yelling. Going, do this, do don't this. do that. Don't do that. What are you doing? Don't take the lid off. Take the uh. bloody thing off. <laughs> just right. capitalise it. <laughs> capitalise it. Hurry up. <laughs> oh, God, you've got to laugh. That's actually not funny. There it is. Yeah, it is it's understandable, let me put it that way. Yeah, I'm going to leave you to it. So with that problem alleviated, I set Janet on to cutting cloth for the extensions. We actually put down two layers of 300 CSM as a tie layer and uh, a layer of 1215 quadraxial and then another layer of 300 CSM, which actually follows the schedule for the laminate that we had engineered by Oceanic Yacht Designs uh, four years ago when we started laying up the hull. Notice Janet is standing on a milk crate because she's too short to use my cutting table. So good lesson, always take your masking tape off. Because <laughs> now I'm a little bit late. We're gonna laminate from there, from here, back to here. Giving us a good sort of four or five inches of bond to the inside and we'll do the same on the outside and then we'll just pull this mold off. But that's set already. So pretty much we could come back in the next hour or so and get laminated. So we're going to go and have some lunch. And I'm thinking I might leave this plastic on here for the most part. Just get rid of this mask, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Righto, we're set up. <laughs> Are you all right, Dylan? Yeah, I just, yeah. Just ready to go? Yeah, all right, this is, this is the surgery station here. So we've got all our tools, we've got the gun, it's all ready. And we've switched over to vinyl ester. And there's a very good reason for that. We made the entire hull out of vinyl ester. So we're gonna continue with that theme on the extensions. There's no point in having this beautiful vinyl ester hull and then putting polyester on the end. That'd be a big mistake and it'd be a cheap way to do it. But we'd end up with uh, osmosis in the very end of the boat and we certainly don't want that particularly uh, you know you don't want to pull a boat out just because you've got a couple of bubbles in the back end so if we do it in vinyl ester to start with and uh, finish the whole hull then we should have minimal osmosis issues we've got a lot of cloth cut we've got everything ready haven't we ready to go eh yeah. let's do it yeah. As we get started on this laminate, you'll notice on the stern, uh, on the very stern right about where Janet's standing, there's a couple of bubbles and what they are, there's actually three. There's a centre one there is actually a mould that was taken off the anode. They didn't even remove the anode when they did the last mould. And those other two on the outside of the extension were actually uh, moulds taken off the underwater lights. So I had to fill those in in order to get a flat surface. We got onto the laminate, laid down the two layers of 300 CSM pretty quickly. The 1215 quad does take a lot of work to get laminated in and quite a bit of resin and we're always mindful of not putting too much resin in because that can create a brittle structure especially when you're hand laminating like we are our resin gun delivery system does actually enable us to control
control the resin uh, a lot easier than it would if we were mixing it in a bucket and just pouring it on. I can actually deliver it in a fairly concise pattern and amount to ensure that we're not ending up with too wet a laminate and uh, thereby reducing weight and increasing the st structural strength of the product. I'm just going to put this last layer of 300 on and then I'm going to peel fly it and then I'll be ready tomorrow. If I wanted to, I could come in and put foam on here. But I'm just going to keep putting solid glass laminate on until I get the structure right and then I'll worry about foam. A little bit of extra weight on the back of this boat won't be an issue. We finished the four layers and the peel ply just on dark. That took about five hours. That was a monster. It, um, it was more the access than the actual laminating. Uh, it was me kneeling over there on the back of the sugar scoop and leaning a, a meter out and not being able to touch down anywhere. So that is now done and I'm pretty happy with that. That's, uh, it's integrated fully into the side of the hull there uh, with four layers and pretty much that's uh, two layers of 300, a layer of 1215 quadraxial, and then another layer of 300. So that's my first go, and there's gonna be a lot more to come. This part here, although it is almost like a separate crash bulkhead, I don't ever want it to break. So if I ever get hit here, uh, that bulkhead's gonna save us, but I may even put another bulkhead in which will save us yet again, and that could actually create a, a, another air void or a crash bulkhead in the stern before we even get to the rudder. So. All of that will be decided a little bit later on. Very, very good result. Unbelievable. And uh, you had enough, honey? Yeah. Dinner time. We've got friends around for dinner. <laughs> Sorry you're late. I hope you've got the dinner prepared, have you? See you, hon. Won't be long. I'll be half an hour. Beautiful. She's an amazing woman. I love her. She is amazing. We've got uh, friends coming around tonight that have got a beautiful little shining wilderness cat. Oh, it's not little, it's 40 foot, but uh, Darren's completed it, and uh, what a boat this thing. It's called Crazy Little Thing. Look it up on Facebook. He's a champion, and uh, he and Liz have been spent the last five years making theirs, and uh, they've just launched it. So we're not far behind, hopefully. But check that out. So we're on day two. We're going to put two more layers on, and then some peel ply, uh, and then we should be done for a little while. And he's off. <laughs> and he's off. Oh yeah, it doesn't take me long to get it moving. <laughs> a lot of prep. <laughs> get into it. Quicker you get the star, isn't it? Get it done. I'm sweating already. Look at me. It's too hot for this, eh? I'm wrecked. I am wrecked. So I just put another two layers of double bias down. And now I have six layers on that hole. So it's solid glass. It's about eight millimeters thick now. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm talking about you, honey. Beautiful. Oh, how do you like spending your retirement? <laughs> well, it's not retirement, is it? You are still working. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, well done. Great job. That's it. Look at that. Beautiful. Very green. <laughs> Got Jaden singing to me over there. Just bizarre. We're going to demold this. I'm just going to start uh, getting it released. I've already got six layers on. It's sort of at a point where it can be demolded without too much harm. It's, going to, it's not going to be pretty, but it is solid. It's uh, really releasing quite well. It's it's going to be pretty ugly, but um, got all the screws out of it. There are a couple of broken screws there, which I'm going to have to physically drill out. But I'll just keep working that. I'm hoping it'll peel away from the front of the mirror. Yeah, it's peeling away. Yeah, it's peeling away. Yeah, Oh, wow, that was pretty um, dramatic. 
Yeah, look down there. Oh, yes, that's got to be fine. Fine, fine, fine. I've lost a wedge down in there. But now I've got to try and work out how to get it off. It needs to be peeled down and away. So this will need to come off. It's like a fucking rattle gun thing. You saw me with a camera. So this mould is going to have to peel away this way to get it off. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to be good. I think we're going to be good. As you can see under here where it's actually gripping, it's this base plate here. There's probably some resin holding that, but it has got release agent on it, so it should come off. And uh, hopefully the whole thing comes off at once. I might even have a hole up under there I have to fix, but I'll have to look. So coming up right now, the demoulding of this hull extension actually wasn't captured on film. The battery went flat just as I pulled it off, cannot believe it, and it wasn't in fact till I got home that I realised that I'd been a really selfish mongrel and uh, denied Janet of the opportunity to watch it either. So um, I'm in the dog box for this episode and I'm really sorry and I do promise to bring you the demolding of the port side uh, hull extensions. Uh, I guarantee I do have that on film. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, guys, and uh, just to uh, show you the final result. keep saying this it's gonna look better but it has to look worse before it can look better and i'm pretty happy with the lines of it now it's uh replicated what the um original boat had to have done to increase the buoyancy and uh that's going to give me a lot of options going forward but you can see down here this here this is actually remnants of the mold so that will actually polish off and the little bits you can see actually the pieces of the chop matting in the in the mold itself but that will polish out but this is all going to be roof sprayed anyway but it was important to get that base layer on there but that'll uh, have to be increased out i'm going to have to basically sand out to probably around four or five inches on each side anyway so that i can get a good tab of glass all the way down here i'm going to have three or four layers of probably 600 double bias uh, down along here and then field plied and then we're going to have to fare it back in so yeah pretty happy I think that's a great result